Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different and I'm going to be doing a little talk, uh, tactics talk. So it's going to be specifically going over the list that I'm going to be taking to a tournament this weekend. So my friend Tony Myers, uh, he owns Hammerhead Games. He is also now the Warlord Games West Coast Demo and Event Team uh, Leader. He's putting on a tournament here in the Sacramento area. Uh, it's a LVO, which is the Las Vegas Open. It's a prep tournament for that, and the winner of the tournament gets entry to the Las Vegas Open to participate in the bolt action tournament there that uh, Tony is also running. Uh, the tournament's going to be down at Ogre's Den, which is uh, the, our local store that all the bolt action players and World War II players uh, congregate at. Uh, it's a great store. It's in Orangevale, California. So if you're ever in that area, check them out. They're uh, really good. Joe's a uh, really uh, great store owner and really into bolt action. So it's good to have a local store that uh, is bolt action oriented. Um, so before I go into my list, uh, I'm going to go over all the units and how I plan to use them. Um, this is a competitive tournament, so I am running a competitive list. It's not going to be historically accurate or anything like that. It's purely to win the tournament. Um, I know Bolt Action generally isn't played like that, but in this case it is. So I apologize if you're not into competitive uh, list for Bolt Action, then this might not be uh, something you're interested in. Uh, some bona fides for me, um, just because I think that if you're going to be taking advice tactically about this game or tournaments, the person who's talking about it should know something. So I have won a couple of tournaments um, already. I haven't actually lost a game in a tournament, I don't think ever. Um, I've won almost every game and had a few draws, and I've lost at least one tournament just on a tiebreaker at the end. So I, I do have some experience uh, running competitive uh, bolt action lists. So this tournament is going to be 1,000 points, uh, single platoon, 14 dice cap uh, max, and then uh, no characters. So that's really all the all the special rules. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so no selectors, obviously. Just just reinforced platoon only. So with that, I will get into the tactical part of it. I'm just going to go over each unit that I brought and talk a little bit about it, how I plan on using it in the tournament. So. Go ahead and get started. Right, so the first thing I'll talk about is the officer. He is a mandatory choice, of course. You have to take one to have a legal platoon in bolt action. So I've chosen to bring a veteran officer, two man, with some machine guns. So I go with the uh, cheapest officer option available, which is the second lieutenant for the Marines, or for everyone actually. But uh, I do that because I don't use Snap 2 very often. Um, you do get more snap two commands if you're a higher grade of uh, rank, but I'm trying to keep them cheap, so I just went with um, the officer, but I did add one extra man, makes them more survivable, and a two-man veteran small team is a great unit to have on the board. So if you're running Russians or early war Germans, I will always bring a two-man uh, anti-tank rifle team veteran. They're um, amazing in the game. A lot of time they get ignored. People don't see them as a threat. And if they do try to shoot at them, they're veterans, so hard to kill. They're a small team, so hard to hit. And they can sneak around. They can hide easily because there's only two of them. And as I said, a lot of times they'll get ignored. You know, you're not going to focus all your fire onto a two-man bazooka team or a two-man anti-tank rifle team if there's a tank or a large squad of infantry coming at you. So that affords the small two-man teams to hide, to sneak around and rush and claim an objective at the end, or you can just camp them on an objective right from the beginning. And by the time that people realize what's happening, a lot of time it's too late. So two-man veteran teams are, I would highly recommend bringing them if you can. So that was one of the reasons I make them veteran. I also make my bazooka veteran for that same reason. So speaking of the bazooka, we'll just move on to him. So bazooka team, two men, veterans. Uh, their main job is anti-tank. 
Uh, this is the only anti-tank that I have in this uh, list, uh, actual anti-tank. I do have a lot of HE, which I'll get to, which is good at anti-tank, but we'll cover that. So, bazooka team and the Jeep is important. So, you have to have a Jeep if you want to use the bazooka effectively. Um, well, I shouldn't say you have to, but it helps uh, because the enemy, a lot of time, if he knows where the bazooka is, he will just deploy away from it, and with only a 24 inch range, it's not very effective. But when you have a Jeep with a bazooka in it, suddenly his range is way farther. He got the 12 inch move of the Jeep, and if you're on a road, it's double that. Plus, you got the 6 inch move of the bazooka, so you're talking 18 inches with 24 inch range, so you're threatening almost the entire board with a bazooka in a Jeep. So they're really good. Um, they're a threat to the tanks. They're not necessarily the best tank killers in the game, but the threat alone will keep the enemy tank honest and he will always have to know where that bazooka is. So, uh, but bazookas, I have killed tanks with bazookas before, so it's not like it can't happen. It's just, it's more of a threat, a deterrent, a uh, area denial than anything else. But from time to time, you'll get a lucky shot and you will actually destroy a tank. So those are my two two-man units. I like to go over that. Just They are great. Two-man veteran small teams are amazing in this game. And if you can take one, take one. Now, if the Americans could take an anti-tank rifle, I would definitely take one, but we can't. So anyway, we'll move on. Um, next we'll go over the heavy hitting part of my force. So these three units here are where all my damage is mainly going to come from in this list. So. And that's HE. I got three sources of HE. Uh, bringing tons of HE is extremely cheesy, but as I said, this is a competitive game. I'm trying to win the tournament. So if you want to win a game of bolt action, you have to kill the infantry, the enemy infantry, because most of the time, infantry are what wins games. They hold objectives. Um, they, they can withstand the most firepower. It takes a lot to kill them, especially if you're fighting veterans. So I bring as much HE as possible. The first HE I bring is a mortar. Medium mortar. Uh, heavy is better if you could get one. Um, I don't have a heavy mortar model for my Marines, so I'm just going medium. Plus it cuts back a little bit of the points. And if they're done in HE, I think maybe the uh, heavy mortar wasn't as necessary. So mortars are great in this game. It seems like they might not be needing a 6 to hit, but you'll be surprised how often that 6 rolls up uh, when you first roll it. And of course the number needed drops every time you shoot at the same target, as long as it hasn't moved. So it's a 2 inch template, it's plus 2 penetration, so if you're hitting a squad of vets, you're, out, you're wounded on 3, three plus. Uh, spotter is a must for the mortar, you have to spend the 10 points. Uh, mortars without spotters are generally, I mean, they're okay, but having a spotter takes them to the next level. You can hide the mortar, it can't be targeted, and people generally aren't gonna waste a lot of time trying to kill spotters because they're, they're considered down, they're small teams. I mean, they're, just, they're not easy to, to take out. It would be a waste to spend a whole turn of shooting from a squad or, or a heavy weapon to take out a spotter. So that generally leaves your mortars relatively safe. Uh, my next HE is a light howitzer. So this is also a two inch template, but it's a little bit better than the mortar and that can fire direct and direct shooting is where it's at with the light howitzer. Uh, so I'll be planning on putting him up in line or line of sight of the enemy, pretty much out in the uh, front or not quite the front, but somewhere where he has good line of sight and will fire directly into enemy units. Another benefit of the light howitzer is that it can't be destroyed by a sniper. Like the, um, the mortar could be taken out by a sniper with one shot with exceptional damage. Not the case with uh, artillery. Now you can also buy a, a gun shield upgrade for the uh, howitzer, which I did not. Um, 1,000 points, points that are at a premium, so I've been kind of toying around with this list for a while now. And gun shield was on there to start. One of the things I had to get cut to make room for more stuff. So the next thing I have is my heavy vehicle. Well, not heavy, it's my, the heaviest vehicle I have in this game, and it's a half track. So this is the uh, M3105 half track. It's got a medium howitzer on it, 
So three inch template plus three pen. So you're, if you hit a squad of veterans with this weapon, it will do a lot of damage. Uh, it's relatively cheap, 120 points. Uh, mobile, cheap, medium howitzer, and it's just a really good unit. Better than a tank, uh, cheaper, but it can dish out the pain. And if people want to spend a lot of time shooting at it, they can. Uh, it is open top, so it can take pins, but with the range of a howitzer, you should be able to stay out of small arms uh, range of enemy units uh, with it. Plus it can move, so you can move and fire it. It's just, uh, it doesn't seem like that great of a unit, a half track, but it's the howitzer that makes it work. And the half track just gives it mobility and a little bit of survivability. It's only seven plus armor, but it can't be destroyed by small arms. So it will be a tank target, but there's ways you can keep it out of line of sight. There's things you can do to sort of screen it and protect it. So that's really my heavy, heavy firepower in this. And with that, I will be going after infantry. Basically with all of my, uh, all of these, I'll be going after infantry. As I said earlier, killing infantry is the key to winning games. Tanks generally, I just ignore them. I don't mess with tanks. Um, the guy wants to bring a big tank and waste a bunch of points on it, that's fine. Uh, the only tanks that are really a big threat are other howitzer tanks. So specifically Stu 42s, uh, 105 Shermans. Uh, they're ridiculously cheap for what they can do in the game. Uh, I would like to have brought a uh, 105 Sherman, but with the cost of everything, I did bring this. Uh, the 105 Sherman is really the only tank I would consider bringing, but in a pinch, this 105 half track will do uh, just as well, and it's a lot cheaper. So next up we have the bulk of my force, which is all my infantry. So these are the backbone of your army. Um, bolt action is an infantry game, and in general you want to bring it as much as you can, especially in the tournament, because as I said, infantry are what wins you games. Uh, they can hold and take objectives. They're not easy to kill, especially veterans. So these guys are all veterans. Uh, these three squads are Marine Raider squads. So Marine Raiders are stubborn veterans. Stubborn is an amazing rule. It allows you to make any kind of uh, morale test on your full uh, leadership. So no matter how many pins you have, you can always roll uh, 10 or less with these guys and pass a morale test. So it's hard to get them to break and run off the field. And then being veterans, they need a five plus to kill them. So unless you're hitting them with HE, it's going to be hard to whittle them down. So, and then on top of that, if you can get them in cover, so it's they're just really good. Stubborn veterans in cover are almost unmovable without high explosives. So three of these um, Marine Marine Raiders have tons of weapon options. Uh, I wound up with just two BARs in each squad and a squad leader with a submachine gun. They can have up to three BARs. And they can take shotguns, they can take pistols, and actually uh, I did have one pistol per uh, squad as well. Pistols give them tough fighter. So with the pistol and with the submachine gun sergeant, I have two tough fighters. You can give more men pistols so you can have tough fighter stubborn veterans, which are just probably the best unit, best infantry unit you can get in this game. So three of those. Uh, I do have a truck, and that is a transport that I use for them. So I like to bring more trucks usually, but again, 1,000 points, points are at a premium. So I just went with one truck. So it's a one and a half ton truck with machine gun. Always get the machine gun because once you drop off, that truck can sit around and shoot and add a lot of pins and maybe get some kills. It's just, it's good to have a machine gun for 15 points. You can't go wrong. So I can fit one squad in the truck. And if I need to, I can put the officer with them because the capacity of the truck is 12 men. So the only thing with trucks is you got to be careful that if at the end of any turn your truck is closer to an enemy unit than one of your own, that truck is destroyed. And if you're playing kill points, that's an easy kill point. So they are fragile. They can be destroyed quite easily. A smart opponent will try to take the truck out intentionally, either by shooting it or just getting close to it. And that's a free kill point if you're playing a kill point game. So uh, they're a little bit of a gamble, but I think they're well worth it. 
for all the extra machine gun shots, plus just the mobility it gives you. I mean, you can have a squad of veterans in your truck. You can rush it up the board, get on to an objective. Even if the truck is blown out from under you and the veterans get out, you're on the objective, or you're where you want to go already. So all you got to do is rally, take any pins off. Suddenly you have a squad of veterans halfway across the board, turn one. And if you're in cover, the enemy can do everything they can to try to get you out of there. You can just sit on the objective, go down, in cover with veterans. I mean, stubborn, it's, it's worth it to just do a truck rush, get on the objective, and just withstand the, the hail of fire that you know is coming. But hopefully you're also maneuvering the other two squads uh, at the same time. Or one squad, whatever, whatever the uh, mission happens to be. Um, the last unit I have is a veter uh, veteran engineer squad. So these guys are not stubborn, but they are veterans. And this is only five man. Again, I usually like to run them six at the mo at the least, and usually for Americans, I like to do eight man because the truck they get, the Dodge three quarter ton, that has an eight man capacity. I also add a machine gun to that, but. Uh, so I had to drop down to five it's for points. Um, still survivable unit, five veterans. Uh, I have them in a the light truck, and I will always outflank these guys. So in many games I played with the Germans, I do the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that the Americans can actually have a machine gun on their, their light truck. The Germans cannot do that with the heavy fuel car. So I put these guys in the truck, and I'll outflank them. Uh, it's quite a shock when the opponent may be forgetting that you have outflankers sitting off the board, just waiting around, turn three, maybe wait to turn four. Suddenly they have five veterans with a flamethrower, two submachine guns, and a BAR in their face. It's a good way to clear objectives. Uh, if you're doing a kill point game, you can wipe out a unit, and you got a machine gun with the truck on top of that. So you're pumping out a lot of shots, and it's just a shock to the system to your opponent to see these guys appear on the board and I don't think there's been a game where I've run this squad that they haven't done something awesome either kill the unit took an objective out cleared enemy off the objective captured an objective I mean outflanking veteran engineers are just an amazing unit in this game so it would be better to have a larger unit I maybe mean, be more survivable but I think that five in the truck will be good um, same rules apply for this truck as the other truck in that it's fragile. You have to keep them away from enemy, which is a little bit harder to do when you're outflanking because, it, you know, just by its nature, outflanking is going to put you behind the enemy lines or closer to the enemy than you normally would be. So the truck needs a little bit more care and attention, but it's worth it because you can come on 12 and move 6, and then you get to fire 6. So you're talking like what? 24 inch range or something like that uh, threat range for that flamethrower on one turn so we can get all the dice that you want so in the right order but it's worth it they're a game changer um, they're, you, you need to use them aggressively um, because that's what they're for they're for getting in people's face burning them out and just dominating so uh, yeah so that's it for my force so it's 12 order dice, which at 1,000 points isn't a whole lot, but considering how many veterans I have, I think 12 is a respectable number of dice. I have put a lot of money to transport, but I always do that because mobility is very important in this game. Most times you won't see people bring trucks at all. They'll just hoof it across the board and they're slow, they're a little bit ponderous, and when you have an advantage like mobility, that makes a big difference and to me it's worth spending all the points on uh, so like I did spend uh, what I spend here 46 points on the three-quarter ton Dodge and 54 points for the one and a half and then 21 so I mean we're talking well over 100 points of a thousand so over 10 percent of my list is spent on transports but it's worth it um, Trucks, transports are just amazing in this game. They change the whole feel of your army. They change the way you play. Your enemy is going to be reacting to you. Uh, they're going to be slower. They're not going to be able to respond as quickly. So it's 
it gives you a lot more options and it just it makes it just a more fun game I think being able to move fast and hit hard and take objectives on the first turn it's 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 really fun so uh, that's about it for going over the force so to wrap it up I just wanted to say uh, thanks for watching this one it's just the first time I tried anything like this um, tactics talk I would like to maybe go into detail maybe on a specific unit maybe show some examples on the board of how it would work but uh, I'm looking forward to this tournament um, I don't know if I'm going to win. I haven't been playing a lot of bolt action. Uh, back when I was winning a lot of tournaments, that's all I played exclusively. So I was getting a lot of practice. We were playing one or two games a week a lot of the time. But you know, recently with sharp practice, chaining command, my bolt action uh, playing has really dropped. I think I maybe played two games in the past two months or something. It's not a whole lot. But uh, Friday night, uh, Andre's going to the tournament as well. And I know he'll be bringing his British. He loves them so much. Um, so it's Friday night we're going to do a practice game with these lists to get ready for the tournament on Saturday. So that should be interesting. Uh, we'll film it, of course, and put it on the channel. See how we do, and then uh, once the tournament's over, um, next time I, I'm on the channel, I will let you know how it went. Um, I don't expect to win because, I, as I said, I haven't been playing a lot, but this list is, I think, a solid list. Or it was back when I was playing tournaments more regularly. For all I know, there's a whole new meta out there, um, but I highly doubt it. That bolt action isn't that type of game where Uber lists uh, take, you know, internet lists take over. It's it's just not like that. So solid list is a solid list. It doesn't matter uh, generally when you're playing it. It's if you haven't played in a year, you come back with your list that you were good at a year ago. It should still be good. So that's what I'm banking on at least. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks again for watching this one, and uh, if you like the uh, tactics talk, I could do more of these. I could do, as I said, specific examples on the board, and maybe go more in-depth on uh, units. And not just for this game either, For I could do it for sharp practice, I could do it for chain command. But uh, for now we're just going to do this one, give a little brief overview of my uh, tournament army. And Friday we'll do the practice battle, and then Saturday is the tournament, and... After that, we'll let you know how it went. So, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.